So we've talked a little bit about spin coupling, and uh, just to review, what I'd like to do is go through uh, this diagram uh, from the Michigan State University website. It comes from their um, Open Organic Chemistry textbook, their free online textbook. So if you have a hydrogen with no neighbors, and what you expect to happen is to get a singlet. If you have a hydrogen with one neighbor, because this could be spin up or spin down, you expect a doublet. And continuing on, if you have two hydrogens, then what you end up getting is a triplet, and three hydrogens is a quartet. Now, that's if the coupling constants are all the same between the two hydrogens, uh, or the hydrogen and the neighboring hydrogen. So what happens when the coupling constants are different? And a, and a place that you can see this uh, fairly commonly is on alkenes, that is double bonds. And we talked about anisotropy, and in anisotropy, it turns out that the hydrogen, let's say this blue hydrogen that's shown here, uh, experiences different amounts of magnetic field interaction depending on the position of the hydrogen uh, that it's coupling with. So where this carbon is, if there was a hydrogen there, it would couple more efficiently, it turns out, than this one and more efficiently than this one. So the hydrogens that's, that are trans couple stronger than the hydrogens that are cis, and the hydrogens that are cis couple stronger than the hydrogens that would be vicinal, that is, on the same carbon. Okay, so... Notice what happens if I have a hydrogen coupled, the HA coupled to my blue hydrogen here, I get essentially what is predicted. That is a coupling constant that will create a doublet uh, for the splitting of this hydrogen with this hydrogen. Now, very briefly, let's go to the next slide. And what you find for trans hydrogens is that the coupling constant tends to be from about 12 to 18 hertz. Now if you remember, we typically do these measurements in parts per million. Uh, we have a 60 megahertz machine, so one part per million would be 60 hertz. So in terms of parts per million, you could take 12 and divide it by 60 and get about 0.2, which would be um, one-fifth of, of 60 hertz. Uh, that would be what you would expect in terms of parts per million, from about 0.2 to about 0.3 uh, uh, parts per million separation between the peaks because of the coupling of these two hydrogens. Now, if they happen to be cis, then the coupling constant happens to be from about 7 to 12 parts uh, hertz, so from about uh, 0.2 parts per million down to about, roughly speaking, about 0.1. And if they're vicinal, that is, if the hydrogens are on the same carbon, the coupling constant is even weaker. So now, going back to the previous slide, what you'll notice is that if you have two hydrogens, so what I've shown up in this diagram, uh, or what is shown in, up in this diagram, is that if you have two hydrogens that are trans to each other, the coupling constant, let's call it JA for the subscript A that's on this hydrogen, this would be from about 12 to 18 hertz. Uh, and again, on our NMR, it would be roughly uh, from about 0.2 to 0.3 parts per million separation. Now, if you look at two hydrogens connected, uh, one trans and one cis, the cis coupling is smaller. So what ends up happening is that the peaks tend to split according to the coupling with the trans hydrogen and that gets split again. And so what you end up with is a pattern which is known as the doublet of doublets. That is, these two peaks are split according to the coupling constant given by the cis, which again is about 0.1 um, parts per million on our NMR. And then the, these two doublets are split by about 0.2 parts per million. Now, if you look at one that is vicinal, then the vicinal coupling constant is even smaller. And so, whereas the trans and the cis give a doublet of doublets, then the vicinal hydrogen will then again split this into uh, more 
doublet sets, and so you get what's known as a doublet of doublets of doublets. Okay, so keep this kind of interaction in mind uh, as we analyze uh, spectra in the future. Now, here's a summary of this coupling constants that you would expect to see um, for different types of hydrogens. Uh, in particular, the ones we just went over are the trans, the cis, and the vicinal. Um, but also, uh, notice down here on a benzene ring, now you'll notice it says ortho, meta, and para. Uh, those terms, O, M, and P, refer to benzene rings, where let's say one hydrogen is here. This is the ortho position, this is the meta, and this is the para. Coupling between, uh, coupling between the hydrogen and the para position hydrogen is very weak, whereas the ortho position hydrogen tends to be very strong. Um, our NMR, unfortunately, doesn't have enough resolution to give us that information that we might hope to get from an NMR of a benzene ring. So typically in our benzene rings, there's so much overlap in the peaks, it's very difficult to analyze, uh, except for very large gross differences, um, what the substitution pattern is on the ring. So with that in mind, I think the thing that's left to do is uh, to analyze a couple of NMR spectra and then um, determine what the structure is based on the NMR spectroscopy, uh, IR spectroscopy, and the mass spec. So that will be done in a later uh, video.